These numbers tell us what we already knew, that right now, Canadians are hurting because of this pandemic. Everyone has their own story, but it all boils down to a very difficult time for a lot of people. Hi, and welcome to Power in Politics. I'm Vashi Capellos. Economists predicted job numbers out today would be devastating, but the numbers themselves are still very stark. As Statistics Canada reports, a historic drop in employment for the month of April. Nearly 2 million Canadians lost their jobs last month at the height of the economic shutdown and COVID-19 pandemic. That's on top of more than 1 million jobs lost in March, but it's actually even worse than that. StatsCan is also reporting 2.5 million people worked less than half their usual hours under COVID-19 restrictions. So in total, 5.5 million Canadians have either lost their job or most of their earnings. As a result, the jobless rate jumped 5 percentage points to 13%, a near record high. So how should we interpret these numbers? What do they mean about where this country's economy is headed? John Manley served as federal finance minister under Prime Minister Jean Chrétien, and Ralph Goodale served as federal finance minister under Prime Minister Paul Martin. Mr. Manley joins us now from Ottawa, and Mr. Goodale joins us from Regina. Great to see you both. Thanks for making time. Hello. Hello. Mr. Manley, I wanted to start with you. The, so many Canadians read that jobs report this morning, uh, and we kind of expected it, but the numbers are, are hard to take. When you saw 2 million Canadians lost their job in April alone, what went through your mind? Uh, that's 2 million families that are trying to figure out how they're going to make their way through this and, and wondering when and how it's all going to end. Uh, there are countless stories of personal hardship in those statistics Vashi, and, and it's important never to get hardened by just the numbers. The unemployment rate, Mr. Goodell, is 13 percent, according to the jobs report, but so many economists are saying it's probably a lot higher. What did you think, Mr. Goodell, when you saw some of those numbers, which, of course, as Mr. Manley pointed out, are attached to very real Canadian families? Well, it's very painful. Uh, painful uh, uh, in terms of... Uh, um, how the economists look at uh, at economic pain, but these are real life human situations, and uh, these numbers demonstrate how critically important it is uh, for uh, governments federally and provincially uh, to be in a position to respond uh, generously to these circumstances uh, and to uh, uh, provide that kind of of support uh, that uh, the Canadian families need to to get through this situation. Uh, and there needs to be a, a full national, fully coordinated, uh, cooperative effort at all levels. I think we've seen that over the course of, of the last several weeks. Uh, but uh, these numbers demonstrate how critically important it is for government to have the capacity to respond. It's on that point that, that I really wanted to draw on both of your experience as, as finance ministers uh, to take us kind of, I guess, behind the scenes from your perspective, starting with you, Mr. Manley. What is the size of the challenge the federal government faces right now and that you would, if you were finance minister, be facing? Oh, you know, um, n neither of us has ever been there when there is what it is today. Uh, this is a shutdown of a large percentage of the Canadian economy. Um, and, uh, you, you know, Vashi, you and I have had this conversation. I, I, I was always a curmudgeon about the deficit, and I think I'm being proven right because uh, we shouldn't have used our gunpowder when the economy was growing because now is when you really need it. And, and, and we should not spare expense at this point in time, we have to get things back uh, on their feet, and that's going to require ingenuity. It's going to require uh, lots of resources, and, you know, there are mistakes that are going to be made, and you're not going to find me criticizing them because I look at it as if my house was on fire, and I've had that experience, by the way, and in the bucket brigade, lots of water gets spilled on its way to the fire. You're not worrying about the water you're spilling you're worrying about getting as much as you can onto the main fire, and that's what government needs to be doing. 
Mr. Kuda, when we talk about the federal government's response, we're in this sort of interim stage right now, right? There was the initial response to when everything was shut down. Now we see provincial economies at varying speeds reopen, but it's not ever going to be like it was until we see a set of treatments or a vaccine. And that could be, you know, more than a year off. What does that require of government when considering its economic response in this sort of mid, mid period? Well, it, it requires uh, flexibility. Uh, it requires governments to be able to be patient, uh, to recognize that uh, one of the worst things you could do uh, is to uh, uh, force a, uh, a, 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 an outcome too quickly and, and thereby compound the health problem and, and uh, absolutely squander all of the progress that has been made so far. So patience is important. Uh, the ability to work together uh, at uh, at all levels of government across all political lines uh, that seems to be happening in large measure, uh, not perfectly, but but uh, for the most part, uh, and also to have uh, and, and this gets into kind of the the economic wonk language, but uh, making sure that we continue to have monetary policy and fiscal policy reinforcing each other. Uh, I think one of the most powerful statements at the beginning of this process. Uh, was to see the Minister of Finance uh, at the same table, at the same uh, news conference uh, with uh, the uh, the Governor of the Bank of Canada uh, and the, uh, the head of the Office of Superintendent of Financial Institutions, demonstrating that all of the levers available to the Government of Canada were going to be uh, pulled in unison and together, mutually reinforcing so that we got the maximum benefit of the federal power collaborating obviously with uh, with the provinces as well. But that continued coordination and patience is going to be is going to be critically important. Mr. Manley, when it comes to some of the specific financial aid measures that the government has put forth, today the Prime Minister said that he will be, that his government will be extending, for example, the wage subsidy beyond June. We don't have any details beyond that, and we won't until next week. But there's also the CERB. When you look at those programs, do you think that there will, you know, lengthy extensions will be necessary? Do you think they're going to have to sort of transform to fit the changes as economies reopen? What, what do you think? Well, I think those are questions that we'd all like to know the answers to. Um, as Ralph was saying, without a, with, when the vaccine comes, then the game changes. And let's all hope that that's sooner rather than later. But until it comes, uh, other accommodations are going to have to be made. I, I fear that this is not sustainable and uh, that governments are not going to be able to keep doing this and that Canadians uh, are not going to stay in their households um, when summer comes, uh, many are going to be anxious to get back to work. And I think what's going to be very important is to figure out what are the policies and protocols and procedures that need to be applied for a safe return to work. Um, assume we don't have a vaccine, then we need to have a very clear understanding about masks, about gloves, about hand washing, about proximity to other people, about how people get in and out of, of uh, public transit or elevators. All of these things need to be carefully thought through because there will be no return to the former normal until there's a vaccine and that we know will take time. Let me just quickly follow up with you, Mr. Manley. Should, should that, those kinds of uh, directives or guidance, should that be coming from the federal government? Because right now it's, it's definitely kind of a, a mix, right? It's primarily led by the provinces, in some cases even municipalities. Well, unfortunately, that's the way our federation works. <laughs> and and I, I'd have to say our federation has worked better in the last couple of months than I remember it in my time in in government, so that's a good thing, but and but also conditions differ across the country. The regions are different, and and uh, uh, accountability is very direct. So I think there will be differences, but I think that that's we're all going to learn from one another in this, and we're going to learn from mistakes, and mistakes will be made, and decisions are so fraught in this area uh, that uh, I think we all need to take a deep breath and say. You know, people are trying to do their best and uh, they all have the right uh, objectives in mind.
There's one last piece, Mr. Goodale, to uh, the sort of potential for government financial aid, and that is for sectors which are particularly hard hit, airlines, tourism, and the oil sector. Uh, the federal government is considering uh, the possibility for backstopping liquidity for those kinds of bigger companies. Do you think that is a move mm -hmm. the government has to make? Uh, I, I think that's a, a logical next piece to, to come uh, into the package. Um, there is already uh, uh, a tremendous amount of uh, liquidity that has already been provided through the action of the Bank of Canada, through the action of, uh, of OSFI, through the direct action of the Government of Canada, through agencies like the BDC and the EDC and the FCC. Uh, but uh, further steps are going to be required. Uh, and then uh, the government will have to calibrate once you've got through the immediate crisis phase and have got a real firm grip on the on the health issue and the recovery from the health issue, uh, then you've got to focus on what are the right tools that will uh, uh, provide the, the, the stimulus for job creation, the restoration of jobs, uh, and uh, the, uh, the increase in the GDP from where it will have sunk uh, because of, uh, of COVID. This is, this is going to take a, uh, a tremendous amount of, uh, of careful thought uh, and, and, uh, and fine tuning uh, for the government to hit the target, as John has mentioned. Uh, no doubt some mistakes will be made, uh, but I think, I think Canadians will have, uh, will have an appetite for generosity from the government of Canada and all other governments in the country uh, to try to make this process uh, as successful as it can possibly be. It won't be perfect. The world has never faced this kind of thing before, uh, but we will get through it together. And remember that, uh, you know, back in World War II, uh, the the uh, the national debt for Canada, the, the federal debt in Canada, uh, exceeded 100% of GDP. It was only a couple of decades ago that the debt was as large as 70% of GDP. Uh, none of the forecasts that I've seen so far have indicated that kind of a problem uh, or that order of magnitude emerging again. Uh, so we should have some, some confidence that we've got an economic basis as unprecedented as this situation is. We've got a, an economic foundation that is strong. Uh, we can't squander it, but it's strong and it should carry Canada through this period better than most other countries. I have just 30 seconds left, Mr. Manley, but I do want to get your perspective on that because at this point, we're looking at a $250 billion deficit. When you add in stimulus, whenever that point gets, I just saw your face, whenever the point, whenever we get at the point where we're lucky enough to be thinking about stimulus and not just addressing the acute needs right now, you know, likely that number will go up. Uh, again, as you know, based on your experience as finance minister, how great is the challenge? How great a challenge will that eventually present? Well, it's an unprecedented challenge again. Uh, a lot depends on whether the earth is totally scorched when we come out of this. Um, but uh, we're starting to see some of the signs in the retail sector with Aldo uh, yesterday mm -hmm. in the U.S. with Neiman Marcus um, and others. Uh, so some big trees are falling. Uh, lots of little ones are going to fall, small businesses. So uh, getting all of those up and running quickly is not just a matter of stimulus, um, because it's going to be recreation of entities and it's going to be a big challenge. It's going to cost a lot of money and governments are going to have to show real discipline on other areas of spending. It's going to be all about the economy till we get this back under control. Okay, I have to leave it there. Great pleasure to have both of you with us on the program tonight. Thank you. All the best. Pleasure. Thank you. John Manley in Ottawa and Ralph Goodale in Regina. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.